So we know your diet works. Coming back to phase one being 20 grams of carbs a day, total carbs. How do you feel about layering in if people are, you know, feeling like they want quicker results or they want to even regulate their blood sugar to a greater extent? How do you feel about people layering in things like berberine, cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, using different quote unquote hacks to regulate blood glucose and then indirectly regulate the insulin? Well, I've certainly seen people try lots of things. And if there's little harm or little potential harm and it's not, you know, inordinately expensive, I'm passively allowing of those things. Although, you know, I'm not going to have a policy to say you need to use something until we have either um, clinical trial with a you know, control group or, or, or placebo, ideally, uh, or to have enough of my own patients doing something to kind of say, okay, I've seen this a while and, and you know, there seems to be a little harm. Uh, I don't know. I know apple cider vinegar can cut the hunger out. And I've seen that to the extreme of, of someone not eating at all. And, and so uh, there's also this apples and oranges thing. If, if a study of apple cider vinegar is done with people who eat carbs, it, it may have a very different effect than among my patients who don't eat carbs. And I'm worried that things might become too strong if the appetite suppression effect of a keto diet becomes super strong and people don't eat at all with apple cider vinegar, that's a downside that you're not going to see in those clinical trials. And you know, there are people who argue about you know, um, these studies that are done uh, going back and forth as proof. Of, and you no, know, these are just kind of uh, looks at how some people respond. Um, the, well, weight loss is, if you're going to try to lose fat mass, fat weight off your body, it, it is a matter of the amount you eat. So if someone comes in and they're losing one pound a week, I usually see one to two pounds per week, and they want to lose weight more uh, faster, they have a wedding coming up, a swimsuit to get into, I'll, I'll explain, well, you, you, know, you lose weight by eating less, not more. And it's fascinating, the mindset, but you mean I don't have to have breakfast? No, not if you're not hungry. And I don't say, I told you that. But No, I never say that. I, I just calmly repeat the same messages over and over. And if you functionally can eat less and feel, you know, like you're, you're satisfied and you want to lose more weight and you're focusing on getting protein as your major, so that's the meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish, and eggs, I, I think it's fine. So you can even add in, you mentioned other supplements, um, but you could actually add in a conscious caloric reduction you know, within limit. I mean, I, I think the medicines now can, we're seeing some of them do three to five pounds of weight loss per week. And that's just a little fast until we have more clinical data. We're, we're worried about muscle mass loss. We, we know that if someone goes for meta, metabolic weight loss surgery and they're losing 50 pounds a month, uh, you know, they're, they're losing muscle mass. That's, that's pretty well documented and we don't want that. So there, there are healthier ways to lose weight than, than other ways. And we think one to two pounds per week is a, a good, when you're not measuring the muscle mass directly, a good rule of, of thumb. And I, I guess I'm passively tolerant of people adding in things. Well, although <laughs> if someone comes in with a dozen supplements, but I mean, this this happens, and you know they line them up. On, and I'll just kind of go, well, you know, I don't think you need any of those. Sometimes the eyes light up, and that's going to save me a lot of money. Or 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 we count out that there's one gram of carb, a gram of sugar in each item, and they're taking twenty of these. I mean, there's your twenty carbs right there. So sometimes that's the hidden carb that people aren't taking into to. Um, uh, uh, into account. But the reason I stay pretty strict is that it, it seems corrective for a lot of the things that are happening today. And probably as a final, you know, uh, uh, spoiler alert, the nuts can get you into trouble. And we don't allow nuts at first. Um, and what? No nuts? It's, see, I know that if it, if it has that kind of tug of, well, I couldn't get it, then that's a possible problem. In my experience, half the people have a problem with nuts at the beginning. 
and and that's just too many. I mean, if if I did a program that only worked half the time, I, not enough people would come back. That said, I mean, when this doesn't work, it's because people aren't doing it and they can't wrap their head around it. So, I, you know, not everyone who comes to learn what I, I teach uh, have success because they're not doing it. If you put people on a research ward and you have people follow this method, it works for everyone. You know, it's kind of like the pill works if people take it. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? When you say people can expect to lose a pound or two a week, is that following the phase one of the plan? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the best experience I have. The, um, when you think of translating in different science, um, the low glycemic diets that are out there that aren't as low in the carbs have less, uh, less outcome, um, lower weight loss per week, per month, per six months. Um, and in a program like mine, you have to have a certain amount of success or people won't come back. You know, they're, they're voting with their feet. If they don't get results, they're not going to come back. Um, that said, you don't have to have 100% success. Enough people will come back. And, yeah, the higher you go on the carbs, I think you're going to get a little less potency, a little less um, uh, weight loss effect. Uh, although um, if there's no time crunch and you wanted to try 50 gram or less and it total net net and it's real foods, what do you have to lose? I mean, yeah, if it's not working in a couple of weeks, move on to something else. And that's kind of my general principle. When I, when I, I just can't believe some people are following their, their experts advice for a year and having no success. I'm like, if you're doing something that doesn't work after two weeks, try something new, bail out. Because and, and then everyone's going to gradually come to low carb, you know, if, if these other approaches aren't working uh, um, in two weeks, because this works, you know, within two days. So I use t two weeks kind of as the, uh, you know, because I, I see some people even gaining weight under their their dietitian or doctor recommendations, and I, no, no, we we can't can't tolerate that in a in a clinic where people come to me. For weight loss. <laughs> Earlier, we talked about the fact that insulin resistance is usually tied to weight gain, but we know it can be independent. What I'm getting at here is we know the number of one to two pounds a week we can expect to lose on the diet. How long does it take for insulin resistance to start to fix itself? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot of variability. So I think uh, insulin resistance can and some people uh, resolve almost overnight. And that's evidenced in the reduction of medications needed, uh, of the uh, way people feel the hunger being gone. Um, and then um, I guess at the other extreme, I might have someone who's lost 100 pounds in a year, but they have another 100 pounds to go, and they still have higher blood sugar levels because the, that extra 100 pounds is still causing some insulin resistance. So it's really a, a phenomenon of watching the individual variation and measuring things. I, I don't really have great statistics as how, what percent, how long. Um, that would, that's a great question. And it could be figured out by using those, by using a, a glucose and insulin or triglyceride HDL levels. Um, uh, and blood sugar level uh, is one factor, but it's not all of them. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. I've had people, even if they're, they've are they been on uh, insulin for 20 years, get off the insulin in as little as eight weeks. The weight loss happens about one to two pounds per week. My philosophy is to get it to work the first time.